Let's continue our discussion of constraints. Discuss implicit constraints and dialog box constraints. You re might remember that last time we talked about geometric, dimensional, and implicit constraints. And when talking about these, we discussed geometric and dimensional, but we kind of put off implicit. Now remember that there are three basic areas in which constraints are discussed in the Katia world. One is the 2D constraints in Sketcher. Then there's the 3D constraints in the dialog box. Well, implicit constraints are tucked into this 2D constraint world in Sketcher. So let's jump into Katia again, look at Sketcher, and talk about these implicit constraints. Then we'll come back and talk about the 3D constraints in the dialog box. Okay, now in Katia, let's go to Sketcher. Let's select a sketch plane. And let's talk about these constraints now. Let's start by drawing a simple line. We're going to expand the specification tree because we're really going to keep an eye on what's going on there. We'll draw a line from here to here. Notice that the line consists of a line and two endpoints. Let's draw another line from here to here. And again, now we have line two and its two endpoints. Now I'd like to have this line stuck to that line right there with the endpoints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one endpoint, hold the control key down and pick the other endpoint, and I'm going to put a constraint of coincidence to make those two stick together. Okay, And now you'll notice that, yes, they do stick together. No matter how you move them, they have to stay together. Okay, Notice that in the tree, there is something called a coincidence, and that coincidence is between the two points. Say OK. So we have two lines with a coincidence that's kind of the glue that holds them together. Now let's draw two more lines over here, but this time I'll use the profiler. And I'll draw a line from here to here, and then double tap here to finish it up. Now you'll notice that in the specification tree, we have two more lines, but only one, two, three more points. It turns out that this is the endpoint of that line. This is the endpoint of both of these lines. It's shared between the two. And then there's another endpoint here. So we get we had no additional coincidence created here, but these two lines are glued together. Okay? That's what they call an implicit or implied constraint. Okay? And it was created with the profiler here uh, automatically. And in fact, if we delete these two, uh, all this geometry, and uh, let's turn off this geometric constraint icon and let's create a rectangle from here to here. Notice that we have lines and points created. There are no constraints created, but a lot of implied or implicit constraints. Okay, great. Now let's draw a vertical line. Okay, let's turn on this option for geometric constraint. Let's draw a line. Let's draw, let's draw a horizontal line from here to here. We have a line, but because we have the H here, we had a parallelism that was created, and that parallelism, look, see this H down here? You can, barely, you can barely see it, but there's an H there on the on the axis system at the origin. See that? Okay. When you highlight this H here, that parallelism, that parallelism is between the line and the horizontal direction. Okay. So when we delete this line, and if we leave this on, and we were to create a rectangle again, we get a rectangle with four parallelisms. Okay. So now we're learning what an implicit constraint is. Now I'm going to delete this geometry. And let's create some more geometry here, just a regular rectangle. Okay, so we have all the lines. And now I'm going to create a corner right in here between this line and this line. And notice my geometric constraint icon is off. So these are tangent here. Oop, this one was on. Let me delete that. There we go. 
These are tangent, but they don't have to maintain tangency. Oh, look at that. These, wow, what happened here? That's kind of, that's kind of odd. These things just kind of come apart. Well, so when we did a corner, we probably didn't want to, to do that. We probably wanted the corner to maintain. Wow, that, that's not looking good. So let me control Z out of this. We'll fix this. There we go. So now this time, I mean, in fact, let me just redraw this rectangle. We'll redraw it. These are connected now. This time I'm going to turn on geometric constraints. And this time I'll put the corner in between here and here. Well, now the geometric constraints were uh, put in there along with a couple of tangencies. And if I delete these tangencies, see if I can do that. There we go. I can delete that one. I can delete that one. So not only were, were there specific geometric constraints called tangencies created, but also we got the implicit constraints or implied constraints in there. Okay? So that is the concept of implicit or implied constraints. And you've got to watch it. It's kind of uh, it's kind of related to some of these icons up here as to whether you get them or not when you're creating geometry. Okay. Well, we just got through talking about implicit constraints that are used in the Sketcher 2D profile. Now let's talk about 3D constraints with dialog boxes. Let's jump into Katia and take a look here. Now we've got a little uh, starter geometry here. What I'd like to do is let's go into this sketch here. This is sketch 0 0.6. I'm going to double click it to go into it. Let's turn it a little sideways and zoom in a little here. You can see that this sketch has quite a few constraints in it. It's got dimensional constraints and it also has tangency constraints. It even has implicit constraints that keep this geometry all together. There's a horizontal constraint. That's a a geometric constraint. So a lot of constraints in that profile. Let's get out of Sketcher. Now let's make a pad out of that sketch. Let's select the pad icon and select the sketch and let's uh, let's change the length here and you'll see the numbers changing as we change it. Let's change the length to be about there and say OK. Now do we consider those numbers of the dimension these numbers here, do we consider those a constraint? Well, mathematically and technically they are. They're a parameter. They constrain the length of the solid. We had constraints that constrain the 2D profile, but this constrains the shape of the solid in a 3D way. So as we change the length of limit 1 or even drag limit 2, if we sit more, we can see the limit 2 changing also. Okay, So we can do preview and see that those limits have indeed been set. Now not only do we have dimensional constraints in the 3D world, but we can also go to geometric type constraints where we set limit 1 to be up to this surface. Okay? And then for limit 2, we could also set it to be a geometric kind of constraint to say up to that surface and say OK. Now we have this solid is constrained in shape between this surface and this solid here. And in fact, if we were to take uh, this curve here and double click it and we were to, say, move it closer and maybe change the shape of it a little bit and pop out of Sketcher, we would see that when we hit Update, our solid is now updated to match the new, uh, the new surface there. And if we go to this solid and its sketch, let's double click its sketch. Here's its sketch. And let's move it closer here okay. and then get out of Sketcher. Now it's moved to a new position. If we hit Update, it moves to the new position. And so does our solid in between here. So this is what we call the dialog boxes are really filled full of constraints, additional constraints on the 3D geometry. So that's what we mean by 
3D constraints in dialog boxes. Now later when we learn assembly design, we'll learn 3D constraints that constrain one part to another part. What we were just talking about were constraints on a single part that constrain the 3D shape of the part.